Hey guys, it's Savage, welcome back to the channel, and we are here in Memmingen in Germany with the Horton H0229. Yes, the Horton. Uh, this is by Rara Avis Sim, and I've been given a copy of this to take a look at for you guys so you can see what's coming with this one. I was quite excited when I heard this announced. This is an unusual aircraft, and it looks very nicely made from the pictures I've seen. Uh, you can even see a little avenger in the cockpit there, which feels very inappropriate, but hey, there are adding World War II pilots to use. Now, this aircraft is coming out towards the end of April, beginning of May, for Marketplace. And for the third-party stores, such as Just Flight and any builds, a week or two after that. So, price is going to be about $21.99, about £18. And we have features I can talk to you about in a second when I pull the manual up for you. Bunch of liveries, dozens of those, plenty of cool stuff on that. Now, Craig at Rarivis sent this to me. So I'm looking at this as a preview copy. We have modern avionics as an option in the cockpit if you wish to use them along the side. Is there an additional supporting feature rather than replacement, of course? Uh, we have night fighter variant wooden prototypes. We have custom flight model. The wheelbarrow takeoff effect, which is so real when you do it. Uh, stable custom flight model, which is interesting because we don't really have a lot of knowledge about this real aircraft. So it'll be tricky, tricky to do. Full custom animations, sounds, gear animations, everything. We'll look at all that. APU sounds, heat glow effects, the works. Lots of intensive features to this that really make it interesting. And it's fully VR compatible. We have checklists and the works and candy features. It's exactly what I look for in an aircraft, actually. So we're going to take a look at this thing. Now, the Horton 229, of course, was originally um, redesigned from work they did in the 30s um, by Gotha to prepare it for mass production. It was a German prototype fighter bomber designed by Reimar and uh, Walter Horton. Uh, built by the Gotha Wagenfabrik in the late stages of World War II. It was one of the first flying wing aircraft to be powered by jet engines. Uh, it was in response to a 43 call by Goring uh, to produce a light bomber capable of meeting this requirement. Now, three were built. It first flew in 1944 as a glider. And in terms of specifications, take a look at those. Maximum speed was to be 520 knots. Uh, the A model could apparently get up to 528. Now, its cruise speed was 490, VNE was 540, takeoff speed 81, landing at 70. In kilometers, it's 150, 130. We we'll need to remember that. Range to be 1,000 nautical miles, and a rate of climb of 22 meters a second, 4,300 feet a minute, very high. Very, very high. She had two 30 millimeter cannons, which is insane. And obviously the bomber variant would have been a thing. So let's go take a look at this aircraft and see what we've got with this beast. Because this is a real monster. Let's get back in the cockpit. Oh god, everything's horribly wrong. I... Sorry, fix my head. Turn that off there. Do you want to go back in the cockpit for me? Yeah, we do. Okay, we'll pull up the checklist here. I'll take a quick look at that. So we've got wheel chocks. We've got the sights. Can be turned on as well. There, gun sight. If we want it, we can turn those off as well. Night fighter aerials on the front. We'll leave those on. We'll go outside. So. Speed this up a little bit. Detailing is very nice, actually. I will say, texture-wise, impressive. At a reasonable price mark, I'd say. We've got lots of liveries, of course, and options and variants and functions. It's unusual. And for my brief flying, actually really enjoyable to fly. And with the features it supports, makes it a very likely one I will fly more than once. Here the engine starters, by the way. Yeah, those ring pulls. That's how you start the engine. It's like starting a weed whacker. <laughs> Crazy, right? The guns, of course, in each wing. I suspect the Marketplace version will have those blocked of some form. But the store versions will not. Love the details, like the ladders and chocks and features that are on this too. That landing gear is very strange. Right. Let's go to the cockpit, shall we? And take a look around. I'll have to kill my head tracking and recenter it because it loves to be stupid about things. So, of course, we have checklists here. These give us our various details. Uh, we can put the engine covers on and off, which has them up here. We can have those exposed if we're doing like a prototype test flight. You can leave those off. Or just have them off to see them. Do not remove uh, parts may fall off. I like that. Engine flame effects we can have on. Chocks on and off. We'll turn those off for now. We'll put those on. 
sight will take the aerial off and the pilot. You can make them invisible. You can, like I say, add in a World War II one if you've got one as an option. Or you can have them on there. So we'll close that. And we'll go to start the aircraft. So, starting, of course, everything's in German on here, which, of course, is quite useful. Uh, landing gear. Landing flaps. Uh, left and right. Links. Recht. Recht. So, the two ignition switches here. These are our engine covers. Although, that's not engine cover, it says there. Zundung. I'm pretty sure it was gear, if my translations are correct. Let me quickly just verify that I'm correct in that regard. No, that's ignition. Sorry, I'm completely wrong. It is ignition. But uh, landing gear stuff here. Of course, front and main main gear. Hop, uh, Fahrwerk. Hopped Fahrwerk. Yeah, main gear. Whatever. I'm roughly translating some of this stuff. My German is still very rusty. My favourite instrument in the entire cockpit, though, is the oxygen gauge. Sauerstoff, which is oxygen. Und fettfrei haften. Halten. Fettfrei halten. Keep fat free. Now, this is accurate to this aircraft. This is accurate to German aircraft in general. This was written on oxygen gauges. If somebody out there knows why German oxygen gauges told you to keep them fat free, I'd love to know. Now, I know fats were used as, as oils and lubricants and things. Is it keep lubricants away from it? Is that the direct translation from technical German to actual German is keep lubricants away from the oxygen system because you know those are two of the holy trinity of fire and pure oxygen systems don't exactly go great with that kind of thing is that what it means or does it mean don't give it to fat pilots i choose to believe it means don't give it to fat pilots so let's get ourselves rocking rolling by the way instruments here we have our various working breakers and down here with landing lights we have radios and we're going to do this, and you now have a GPS, an ADF, a GPS, and a radio. So you can use those for modern functions. We'll, we'll put this on for the time being, and we'll pop our checklist up, which do function here. So before starting, parking brake is set. That is set. That's on top of the stick. It's here. There we go. Uh, control stick is free and will travel. It is free. It is good to go. Oh yes, the guns also work. No effects, but you do get gun sounds, which is kind of cool. Fuses are all checked, we already did that. Altimeters are good, battery is going to be on. So battery on, fuel valves open, and the fuel pumps. So those are our pumps there. The valves open. There we go. Fuel cut off, yada yada. Speed bricks here which are opening under the fuselage or will open once we have power to the aircraft so we'll do that first uh, let's make sure we have our landing gear selected down it is that's all ready to rock and roll so engine starting is a simple matter of throttles cracked which we'll do here there we go everything else is where it should be and then it is ignition on left and right and then we get the fun of the engine starting which is out here Yes, that's how I start the engine, like a weed whacker. And there's our spoiler that came out underneath the aircraft. As she starts up for us. Back in the cockpit here. And it's going to spin up as it goes here. Here's our power coming on. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's make it a little darker. We can take a look at this at night. That's where it's in balance. We don't want that. So whilst the engine start will go dark. So close the canopy so you can see that. And of course this is dimmable. If I can find out where it is now. That there we go. I had it a second ago. It's hovering over the right thing because now I can't see it because it's dark. We dim this right down. Oh look at that, it's lovely. That is really nice. No, not checklist. Weather. There we go. And we'll check the last checklist items on after starting engine. Just throttles to close, alternators on, they're on, radios on, transponders to standby, landing lights, navigation lights, parking brake. Excellent. Those are all good. Alright. 
pull the checklist up here. We'll pull those. Put this away. We will turn my head tracking on. And we'll get this operation all to good to go here. Now, I know it's been 10 minutes of us on the ground looking at this thing technically, but it's a very unusual aircraft. And it's been made very well. The 3D modeling and texturing is really nice. I will say I do like that. And I, as much as I like having these features, I'm going to turn this off. So radars on there, that's transponder. Put this back to historical version, shall we? Ah. Gun sight options there. So we're going to taxi ourselves out to the runway here at uh, Memmingen. And get ourselves going. Again, I do apologise to any German viewers about any pronunciations. Although you will note that I can't help myself now when it comes to pronouncing German words. I'm starting to say them properly. <laughs> Small victories. I'm starting to actually pronounce things correctly uh, by accident in an accent. I've noticed uh, friends who've spent a lot of time in Germany do the same thing. and I'm starting to do it too now. My uh, learning is going well. Is it the aircraft? Oh, we need to, you know what? I can't take off with those out, so that's a good thing we checked that. Very broad, very narrow. Of course, the flying wing design, way before its time, there were propeller variants of these design, designed initially, and of course, jet powered in its version that was developed at the end of the war. Now, I couldn't find any information about who tested these aircraft, but of course, two very famous test pilots during this period were uh, Milita. Uh, Grafin, although she was Militia, Milita Schenk uh, Grafin von Stauffenberg, who was a Jewish uh, woman, a Jewish pilot, one of the only a handful, two in fact, I believe, uh, female pilots who were test pilots in Germany in that period. In fact, she was so important to the war effort and her testing. In fact, she was one of the main people behind um, developing the actual automatic uh, air brake system on the, or dive brakes, sorry, on the Stuka that whilst her family ended up in concentration camps, she wasn't because of the vitality of her work. The other was Hannah uh, Rech, who was absolutely a card-carrying party member and not the same. But uh, Milita was Jewish. And, yeah, survived because of how useful she was. These two women both had thousands of flight hours. They, they were intrinsic behind things like the V1s, the first jet aircraft for the Germans in terms of Hannah's work. Uh, one of them horrible, one of them not so horrible, but at the same time, it's very exciting just to see women in that sort of position. Okay, let's get ourselves going, shall we? So advancing the throttles here, and I'm going to go third person for takeoff because speed's going to be relevant, but I want to see this takeoff. There we go, on the main wheel, that's why it's so big. And the main, the back gear comes up first, and then we're just on that front wheel alone, and then we can just peel back and up it comes. Crazy, isn't it? We'll hit the brakes and stop the gear turning pull this stuff up. Massive main wheel. Almost like a glider behaviour in that regard. There's this one big wheel. Beautifully animated gear. Now this thing does go fast. I mean, you will fly like an eagle. Watch this. The climbs rate on this is insanity. We'll just keep going up. This thing is climbing at a ridiculous rate of knots. We're passing through 4,000 meters right now. We've got 12,000 feet. Absolute insanity. 6,000. Which if I do my quick math is going to put us in the region of 18. It's stupid. Yeah, we're passing through 20,000 feet already. And we're up here. So power back. Put the speed brakes out. And those are coming out the bottom of the fuselage here. I mean, maybe a little dramatic in terms of its performance for an early jet. The jet thrust wasn't that high. But it's cool in that it's an interesting feature that this jet behaves this way. No notable difference in sound when I open that vent there. And I can't open that in flight. That doesn't work. So it doesn't actually do anything. That doesn't also do anything, but eh, okay, whatever. I'll give him a break on that. There's the yeah, airfield down there. Crazy, huh? Bringing our speed back now, we'll start to dive. So what I'm going to do, just to get speed to our advantage, I'm going to put the gear out here, just over 200 miles an hour. 
let the speed drop even further to about 150 and then full flaps deployed and we're going to use the dirty elevator technique and drop the nose and let it sink this thing is filthy right now because it's a very 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 clean airframe by default oh let's monitor our speed there let's hold that back there till we're about neutral we'll descend about 200 miles an hour or kilometers an hour sorry 200 k's feels appropriate but it's a beautifully made aircraft i do like this i'd love to see more weird or even just not so weird german aircraft because this is the rara avis uh quality we're seeing here in this i'd like to see maybe a ju88 or a 111 that'd be fantastic Let me just take a quick look at something. Rara Avis Sim. I'm pretty sure I recall seeing some of their stuff they've released. Oh, the English Electric Wren was one of them. And the Sim Flying Flea. So they put out a couple of aircraft. I believe one or two others I've actually looked at in the past, but nothing this big. I really like what they've done with it texture-wise. It looks and feels really nice inside. I'd say it's on par with all the World War II stuff we've gotten so far in the Sim. It's a quality. Uh, obviously, it's hard to say how accurate it is, given that there isn't a real one, really, that's flying. We don't have tons of knowledge about it and its performance, so it's hard to tell. But it is plausible in terms of its behaviour, because it's such an unconventional aircraft. There we go. That's that pulled back in. Here's Memmingen. There's our field. Now she's very snappy when it comes to the power. Flying wing that can do a barrel? Yeah, this. Let's take it for a bit of a stretch, shall we? Oh, almost a howling sound starting to build up now. It's definitely unusual. I really like this plane. And that price point would definitely be a price point where if I was buying this myself as a customer, and I probably will do, uh, I actually will happily buy this actually for this price. Because it does everything it says it's going to do in a really nice way. It's not crazy. Nothing feels rushed or too simple. It all feels plausible. But it's in a really interesting way. And it certainly is a very good airplane to look at from the cockpit. And once you get familiar with the, the, the German kind of instrumentation here, the kilometers, the meters, the KPH, you get used to that. It becomes easier. And when you at least understand what the annotations say, it's even easier then. But uh, does it look like Comic Sans? Yes, quite similar. But I guess in this version, it's meant to be handwritten as essentially just a way of marking out a prototype. Now, there is a pack I mentioned in the liveries earlier that is uh, <laughs> there's a version that gives you some of the variants that would have had certain logos on them can be replaced. Flaps out, gear is down, confirm green three. I am definitely off the runway centerline here. Can I drop it back in? We've got tons of runway and nothing major with the aircraft. I've definitely underturned this. I should be able to correct and put us on centre before too long. We'll use more of the runway than we need because we've got tons of room here. But I will say that as an aircraft, it's simple to operate, it's simple to fly, but interesting and fun all the same. And being a twin engine jet is quite unusual for the time period. So you can make up your own science fiction missions to go off and fly on. Ah, the guns are attached to the uh, water rudder toggle, like a lot of other aircraft have. So I have that on my stick because they're all using a similar key. It's nice to know developers are starting to use the same kind of functions for these gun effects. Okay, I'm losing some pitch authority here on landing approach. We'll go for the first touchdown markers here. We're a bit slow, actually. We need to pick some speed up here. We're looking for 130. Is it going to stall on me? 
I'm floating a little bit here. Touch down. We're probably going to be off, off the rear wheels here. No, we're on the rear wheels. It lifts forward on those a little bit, almost like a tail dragger. I wanted to tip over forward. But it does feel a little bit like a tail dragon when it's got two wheels at the back rather than one. There we go. The canopy won't open at this speed for some unknown reason. Okay, now it will. Flaps up and we're taxiing back in. So, not the best circuit, I should say, because I was talking too much and not turning. But correctable, and it's, it lands relatively short for what it is. Big lifting surface, though, so it would be very, very high lift. And 130 miles an hour is quite a slow landing speed. 150 takeoff, achieved really quickly. Takes off in a very tiny distance. So a very maneuverable and spicy aeroplane. I just have the detail in the cockpit here. The wood, of course, because it was made of wood. And, of course, scant resources for metal at the end of the wall. The exposed cabling is quite nice. And the panel is logical and makes sense, a lot of sense in this. Although the buttons on the stick being worn out it does give it a what if potential. You know, what if this was actually used and flown regularly enough for the paint to wear off? You know, what if these saw action? Would have been crazy, right? Apparently they did some testing with scale models, by the way. The actual radar cross section on these was actually really, really low. So essentially they were the first stealth fighter or stealth bomber. And if they'd seen actual service, they could have been devastating. British radar at the time might not have been able to pick them up at all. And you would have had the Germans with a stealth weapon. So, uh, the Austrian painters of Waffen, in this case, probably would have worked if they had their time and money. The two most important factors in that, right? So what do I think? Uh, as a preview of this, I think it's a fantastic idea. I'll be picking up a copy myself. And I think they've done a really, really good job with this. I'm really pleased with it. The flight model's thrust it feels a little high for a period jet engine because period jets were quite temperamental i know the jumos in the 262s struggled a bit on thrust sometimes and were a little bit slow to accelerate this is very quick to spool up so i'd probably increase the spool time and i'd reduce the thrust now there are some numbers they're working to so clearly they're trying to achieve those so and i'm not an expert i'm going off feel and sensation more than anything else with this, but it is honestly worth your sim bucks when it comes to it. And little Sim Avenger looks very at home in this wheelbarrow of a flying wing. Me likey. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.